We're going to add a sprite character into our Flutter game and have the camera of the game, the virtual camera, follow the character around the screen so that we can then the map will move with the character. So let's first set up our character. We're just going to call the character girl. So it's like maybe some type of you know, mystical or magical girl warrior in some ancient samurai village. The girl is a sprite component, so we need the flame components to be imported into the game. We're using late so that we could uh, declare the girl variable outside of the onload loop. I mean, onload method, and then within the update loop, maybe move her around. So girl equals sprite component to instantiate the sprite component. We're using the cascade operator dot dot sprite, which is a property of the sprite component, and we're going to load the girl. We specify the assets in the previous video. Right? So we have the assets for this PNG file in our puspec.yaml and the property for a sprite, we just load the sprite. It's a wait because uh, this is an async method and we want to make sure that the sprite has loaded from the local storage. And the size will be the size that you want your character to appear on the screen. Uh, you don't have to use her exact size of the image, but I'm just going to use the uh, I just wanted to check what the exact size of the image on my local storage is. And I'm going to use those same uh, numbers, at least the, the exact same ratio, so that she's not distorted. You don't have to use the same size uh, elements as what's on your disk. I'm not sp specifying position, so her upper left will appear on the uh, upper left of the screen, right? So the, her left corner, upper left corner, will be in the upper left corner of the screen. To get the girl to appear and render it on the screen, we can just add it here. Add is a keyword from Flame. So when we add our character, we have this kind of magical looking uh, warrior here that's going to go through the village. She's not animated, meaning that her arms and legs aren't moving, but it's basically the same type of concept if you want an animated character. What we're focused on right now is just to get the camera to follow the girl around the map so that you can see what happens when the map moves. And for that, we're going to attach the camera.follow component, which is from Flame, to the girl. And then to get her to move around the screen, since we don't have a virtual joystick or there's no inputs, it might be too complex for this tutorial, I'm just going to have her move within the update method. The update method is from the flame game. And so we're going to do the super.update first. And then we're going to set the girl's position to a new position every time through the loop. So every time through the loop, I'm going to add a new vector onto her current vector position. So the position is a vector. So every time through it, we're just adjusting the position by this arbitrary number 30 times dt. And she's moving across. She's looking pretty good. You know, it would probably look better with some animation, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, but at least we have the map working, and we have no bounds on the map. So let's, uh, let's maybe add that in. I'll first have her start at a more central lo location in our game. I'm going to have her start off in the center of the mobile app screen. So the size here is the size of the flame game. So it's the size of the display. It's not the size of the map. Then the, the map is bigger than the size of the screen. But right now when she goes off, when, when she runs out of map, there's this black, you know, she's going to enter this black space. So we actually want to prevent her from going so far that she runs out of the map. So in order to do this, we need to specify the world's bound parameter. And the world's bound parameter requires a rectangle. So I, I'm going to need to figure out how, how wide the, the map is, the actual, the virtual map, right? So it's bigger than the screen. And I couldn't figure out an easy way to, to get this number in uh, the tile map. So I'm, I'm just going to do a longer method here where uh, the home map is the map that has been loaded. And then I'm going to grab the 
the width of the tile and the number of tiles on the actual map. So that's how I'm calculating the width and the height of the virtual map. So it's the it's the height of the map in number of tiles, and then I multiply it times the number of tiles. So you know it's it's not too bad. Oh, there's probably a single parameter or property to grab this information, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just doing the long way to create this rectangle. So the re the rectangle will start off at zero zero. It's the top left hand corner of the screen. And we'll insert the width and the height of the virtual map. So this whole thing is to set the bounds of the camera. And the girl can actually, she can actually leave the map, right? So, but she just won't be visible on the screen. But the camera, at least, specifically stopped moving. So we don't have that black band. And now we just need to set bounds for the girl. There are many other videos in the 2022 Flame Tutorial Series as well as 26 videos in the 2021 series. Subscribe to the channel for future updates. These videos are all on Teachable as a free course. There is no upsell as this is purely a hobby for me. I'm using Teachable only for the progress so you can see how far you have progressed with the course. It also makes it easier for me to organize the videos and the sequence of information that I'm presenting. In whatever way you choose to learn, the most important thing is to keep on trying to learn and have fun while doing it. Have a great day.